might be leaving that off. <laughs> Do it again. Well, let's get to God's Word. <laughs> Psalm 34. Oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt His name together. I sought the Lord, and He answered me and delivered me from all my fears. Those who look to Him are radiant, and their faces shall never be ashamed. This poor man cried, and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear him and delivers them. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man who takes refuge in him. Oh, fear the Lord, you his saints, for those who fear him have no lack. The young lions suffer want and hunger, but those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. What a day this is to be reminded of God's promises, of who He is, and what He invites you to receive from Him. It's such an honor to, on this day, get to magnify the Lord together with you guys. For all the Lord is and all He's doing, you belong to Him. And you inhabit a story that's filled with His glorious purposes. So who gives this woman to be married to this man? Her mother and I. Josh, take Melanie's hand and come forward. Let's pray. Father, You are worthy to be magnified today. That's what we want to do, Lord, this evening. We want to magnify Your glorious name. Because You're good. Thank You for all that You've done in Josh and Melanie's lives. Lord, we pray that during this celebration and in this very moment of them getting married, that Lord, You'd fill them, fill them with a sense of just how wonderful You are and how worthy You are of trust, we pray. In Jesus' name, Amen. Well, before we continue, Josh and Melanie want to express their gratitude to God for all He is and all He's done through singing. So you can remain standing and uh, you'll find the lyrics to Be Thou My Vision in your program.
Amen. You may be seated. Well, you know what is amazing. <laughs> you know what's amazing about this moment. I mean, there's a lot of things, but what's amazing about this moment right now is that it it reflects and, and communicates so much about who God is and what He has done and what He's committed to do. Josh and Melanie, He has prepared you for this moment. His plans are far from over. Today is answer to prayer. Oh, I just love thinking about this answer to prayer. Countless prayers that have been prayed by your families, generation of families, by your friends, your church. It's amazing to think about. God has been faithful and He always will be. So, my goal now is to remind you, you just, you have every reason to trust Him as you're coming into this marriage. Psalm 34, what I read when you came down, Melanie, David had just been delivered from a near-death experience. God was faithful to him. God was good to him. God was powerful to rescue him out of his trouble. And so David not only celebrates that reality, but he invites everybody around him who's listening to celebrate with him. He's confident that God's deliverance that he has experienced can and will be our and their experience too. So just think at your wedding, knowing your love for God's deliverance in your own lives, knowing your passion, your, your love to cry out to the Lord and to honor Him and to seek Him, knowing your love to see others know and put their trust in Him. It just seems fitting to use these verses to talk about God's faithfulness, to seek to encourage your hearts. And, but this has been and will continue to be your experience because God doesn't change. He is immovable. You have radiant faces today. Not just because you're giddy. Not just because you finally get to marry your best friend. Not just because you're surrounded by this motley crew of, of friends. <laughs> but primarily because you love the Lord. You've looked to Him. You've, you've trusted in Him. He's been faithful to you. He's given you wonderful, loving parents who have invested in you and prayed for you and taught you and pointed you to the greatness of who God is. He's delivered you from your sin. He's given you great love for Him. He began your friendship. He has kept you for one and other. He has covered up Josh's faults in Melanie's eyes so that she'd agree to be here today. <laughs> Actually, what's amazing is he, he hasn't done that. She knows them and she's still here, brother. It's amazing. <laughs> And today He's bringing you together oh, in this marriage. And I just love that word, those who look to Him are radiant. It, it's not just a description. It's a promise. As you look to the Lord, you will never be ashamed. He will never be found unfaithful. It's a promise of provision. He's trustworthy. And He's proven it already so many times, hasn't He? I think God wants to strengthen your faith as you walk into this amazing thing that He has done. His invitation for you is to taste and see afresh that He's good. To know that you'll be blessed as you together now, as you together take refuge in Him. Even the mighty lions, it says, the powerful and the strong, even they suffer want, but you, His children, those whom He has redeemed and set His love upon, you will lack nothing as you seek Him. Marriage is a wonderful opportunity to trust in the Lord. And you know, especially right now in these uncertain times, these troubling times, what a great time to have a God-glorifying wedding. In light of all the cancellations and, and closings and turmoil, what, what a joy to celebrate. God's not canceled. God continues to work. God's purposes stand. He will not be thwarted. You can trust Him. And no doubt, knowing both of you, you, you feel your need 
for the Lord as you enter into this marriage, which is such a good thing. That doesn't rob you of joy. That encourages your joy. You need, and God's a deliverer. It's a great deal. You need help to fulfill the calling He's called you to, but that's exactly what the Lord loves to do. The psalm's not just about David's experience. It's instruction for us. Pray and ask the Lord for help. He'll hear you, respond to you. So one encouragement to you guys is just, just never stop being that poor man, that poor woman who cries out to the Lord. Never stop feeling your need for Him. One thing to, to do well in, in marriage is just learn to love to repent to one another, to the Lord. It's just good to confess your need. It will go well. How, how can we know that? How can we be confident to even do that? Well, that's the beauty of where that psalm takes us. It's the beauty of what your marriage ultimately points to. God's salvation. God's deliverance ultimately in Christ. The cross not only tells us our sin really was that bad, it tells us God's love for us really is that great. He's done the greatest thing in delivering you from your sin through the death of His Son. And if He has done what is greatest, how will He not also provide for everything else? He will. That's why we magnify Him together. Oh, that's why it's such a joy to do that together with you. In Ephesians 5, Paul says that this mystery of marriage, the reason marriage is so amazing and beautiful is because it represents Christ and the church. Christ laying His life down for His bride, His people. Your marriage is not... Uh, God's solution to loneliness. It's part of this grand design and purpose for your lives. For your lives and for the world to spread the Gospel that more and more people might magnify the Lord and taste and see that He's good. It's just been such an honor for me to watch both of you grow in the Lord these last years, number of years. and You both are just sincere, wonderful believers. You really do love the Lord. You really do love other people well. You really are humble and caring people. And these things are so obvious. You, you have enjoyed so much grace from God. And so, beginning this day and going for the rest of your days on earth to get together, may your marriage every day, may it remind you of the grace of God you have received in Christ. So, this is what Scripture calls you to specifically in this, Josh. As a husband, you're called by God to follow Christ and lead like His example. His example of sacrifice, of love, of giving His life away for the good of His bride. Your leadership ought to be gentle, gracious, self-giving, committed to her good, the good of your family. Peter calls you to live with her in an understanding way, showing honor to her so that your prayers aren't hindered. It's a big deal, but it's an incredible joy and an incredible calling you have. You're called by God to be the spiritual leader of your home, leading in a God-centered, God-glorifying direction. And God will help you. He will help you. And as you do, you're going to magnify His name. And you're going to testify to His goodness. And Melanie... You are called as the wife to model the church and the church's example of following Christ. Scripture calls you to submit to Josh's sacrificial leadership to support him, to follow and respect him, to help him accomplish what God has called him to accomplish. And you have to realize that help is crucial. Starting this moment, he cannot do what God has called him to do without you. So you're important uh, you are important God's good design for your lives. Part of what that means is to pray for Him, encourage Him, support Him, be His truest friend, and God will help you. And as you do that, you will magnify His name and testify to His goodness. Well, now we're going to exchange vows. These vows are a high calling, but if it was God who began a good work, and He did, He will be faithful to complete it and sustain you in every way. So you ready? Yeah. Josh, 
do you take Melanie as your wife to love as Christ loves the church? Do you promise to protect and care for her as yourself for the rest of your life? I do. All right. And the bride's ring. You can turn to Melanie and place that ring on her finger. And repeat after me. Melanie, for the rest of my life. Melanie, for the rest of my life. According to the grace of God. According to the grace of God. I will love, lead, and cherish you. I will love, lead, and cherish you. I will love you graciously. I will love you graciously. Not according to your performance. Not according to your performance. I will love you with understanding. I will love you with understanding. Patience. Patience. Perseverance. Perseverance. And humility. And humility. I promise to sacrifice for your sake. I promise to sacrifice for your sake. And lay down my life. And lay down my life. For your greatest good. For your greatest good. I will provide for you. I will provide for you. Protecting you physically. Protecting you physically. Spiritually and emotionally. Spiritually and emotionally. I will faithfully pray for you. I will faithfully pray for you. I promise to lovingly confront and correct your sin. I promise to lovingly confront and correct your sin. So that we, you may grow in godliness. So that you may grow in godliness. And will openly confess my sin to you. And will openly confess my sin to you. So that we may grow in unity. So that we may grow in unity. I promise to always forgive you. I promise to always forgive you. I promise to keep watch over my own soul. I promise to keep watch over my own soul. So that I may lead you. So that I may lead you. To love Christ more. To love Christ more. Than you love me. Than you love me. I promise to honor you. I promise to honor you. In public and in private. And in public and in private. To treat you like the priceless gift that you are. To treat you like the priceless gift that you are. I will guard the sanctity of our marriage. I will guard the sanctity of our marriage. And value this relationship. And value this relationship. Above all others. Above all others. Melanie with this ring. Melanie with this ring. I be wed. I be wed. <laughs> <laughs> Melanie? Do you receive Josh as your husband, promising to submit to and honor his leadership as the Christ, as the church submits to and honors Christ? Okay. You can place it on his finger. Sorry, I should have told you that. And then repeat after me. <laughs> Josh, for the rest of my life. Josh, for the rest of my life. According to the grace of God, I will be your helper, seeking to build up our home with warmth and wisdom. I will love you graciously, not according to your performance. I will respect you and submit to you as the church submits to Christ. I will communicate with you with genuine care and a commitment to do you good. I promise to honor and affirm your leadership, drawing attention to the grace of God in your life. I will faithfully pray for you. I promise to lovingly and confront and correct your sin so that you may grow in godliness and will openly confess my sin to you so that we may grow in unity. I promise to always forgive you. I promise to keep watch over my own soul so that I may encourage you to rest in the love of Christ. I promise to respect and love you Treasuring you like the priceless gift that you are. I will guard the sanctity of our marriage and value this relationship above all others. Joshua, with this ring, I be with. Amen. And now we're going to turn our attention and trust to God's faithfulness to keep and sustain us. So let's 
stand together, and we're now going to sing uh, He Will Hold Me Fast. Josh and Melanie, as you have declared these promises before God in this congregation of witnesses to the exchange of vows, with the authority vested in me as a minister of the gospel of Jesus Christ, I now pronounce you husband and wife. Hallelujah. Amen. Yeah. Josh, you may kiss your bride, yeah. brother.